Hey everybody, it's Kristen. We're on week four of, um, what should we call this? Uh, social distancing story time, stay at home story time, something else. Uh, if you like either of those names or have something else to suggest, let me know down in the comments. Molly is here with me today, although thankfully she's already worn herself out for the morning, so she's just going to lie there and be cute while I read. Yes, you are adorable. Everybody thinks so. So the book today that we're doing is a middle grade novel called Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk. Um, I was given this as an advanced copy by the publisher back when it first came out. Knew nothing about it, read it, and was pretty much blown away. My first instinct was to call it This Generation's To Kill a Mockingbird, which sounded kind of uh, extreme even for me. So I went looking online at other people's reviews, and I wasn't the only person saying that. So that should give you an idea of how good it is. It's a story that takes place um, during uh, the last part of uh, World War I. It's a uh, story about a small town down in the south. And I think the best way to describe it is that it's a story about how a community treats its outsiders. And outsiders isn't quite the word that I want because it's people who are, you know, part of the community, but who maybe don't quite fit into what the community thinks they should be. Um, and the way that we see and treat people that we perceive as being not like us. So the section I'm going to read is the description. The main character is just about to turn 12, and her grandfather is explaining why um, Wolf Hollow got its name. When I was smaller, I asked my grandfather how Wolf Hollow got its name. They used to dig deep pits there for catching wolves, he said. He was one of the eight of us who lived together in the farmhouse that had been in our family for a hundred years. Three generations tucked together under one roof after the depression had tightened the whole country's belt and made our farm the best of all places to live. Now with the Second World War raging, lots of people grew victory gardens to help feed themselves. But our whole farm was a giant victory garden that my grandfather had spent his whole life tending. He was a serious man who always told me the truth, which I didn't always want but sometimes asked for anyway. When I asked him how Wolf Hollow got its name, for instance, he told me, even though I was only eight at the time. He was sitting in a chair near the stove in the kitchen, his elbows on his knees, hands hanging loose from his big wrists, pale feet ready for his boots. Different times of the year he looked like a younger man, open-eyed. That morning, even though it was only just June, he looked beat. The top of his forehead was as white as his feet, but his nose and cheeks were brown, like his hands and his arms, up to where he rolled his sleeves. I knew how weary he was, even though he spent a good part of every day sitting in the shade doing small work. What do they want to catch wolves for? You couldn't milk a wolf, or hitch it to a plow, or eat it for dinner, I didn't think. So there wouldn't be as many running around here anymore. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking at his hands. Even though they were already tough as hide, he had a weeping blister at the base of each thumb from helping my father with the planting. Eating the chickens? I asked. Sometimes I woke up in the morning to my mother screaming at a fox that had dug its way into the hen house. I wasn't sure even my mother would go after a wolf that way. Among other things. He sat up straight and rubbed his eyes. Weren't enough people hunting wolves anymore. They were getting too brave and too many. I thought about a pit full of wolves. Did they kill them after they got them in the pit? My grandfather sighed. Shot them. Turned in their ears for the bounty. Three dollars a pair. Their ears? If there were pups, did they keep them for pets? My grandfather didn't make much noise when he laughed. It was a matter of his shoulders shaking a couple of times. You think a wolf would get along with dogs? There were always plenty of dogs on the farm. I couldn't imagine the place without six or seven running around. Once in a while, one would disappear, but after a time, another would show up to take its place. But they could have raised the pups right, made dogs out of them. My grandfather pulled his suspenders up over his shoulders and began to put on his socks. 
a wolf is not a dog and never will be, he said, no matter how you raise it. When he had his boots on and laced, he stood up and put one of his big hands on the top of my head. They killed the pups too, Annabelle. Probably didn't give it much thought. Don't forget you weren't the least bit bothered when I mashed that young copperhead last spring. The snake had kept the imprint of his boot like it was made of clay. Copperheads are poisonous, I said. That's different. Not to the snake it isn't, he said. Or to the god who made it. So yeah, a lot to unpack in there. A lot of symbolism. Honestly, I think this could probably be a young adult book, but since the main character is so young, I kind of see where they're going. Anyway, really good book. If you would like to pick up a copy, you can order it through our website, or you can drop us an email. Um, we uh, are open at limited hours for pickup. You can find those hours on our website. Otherwise, we can mail it to you. And I hope you enjoyed this little segment of this book. It's one of my favorites. And I hope everybody is having a good week. And please remember to wash your hands. Stay safe.